uh, demonstrate this more advanced position first and then we'll go into the details. We'll start off in cat position. Even though this is a preparatory pose, it's important uh, to give attention to this pose as well because it's the foundation of Mayurasana. So make sure the fingers are spread, you feel the palms of the hands touching the earth. Now, move the forehead between the hands, roll on the top of the head, extend the arms to the back, keep the fingers spread apart, pull the hands back in, elbows together. Now, walk or place the feet all the way back. Make sure the elbows are making firm contact with the belly, just above the belly button, the navel. Now you can intensify the pose first by looking forward, lifting up the head like this. If you're comfortable with this, then you can slowly lift up one and eventually both legs like this. Maybe first the left leg, the right leg, and eventually uh, find your balance, move slightly forward. Keep breathing. So this is Mayurasana. Now we're going into the details a bit deeper. What is important is the position of the hands and the elbows. Especially for girls, it is important to make more or less a scooping motion with the arms, the elbows touching each other. Make sure the fingers, the palms of the hands are stretched out. So the elbows make a deep contact with the abdomen the belly button. It is normal that the elbows may slip a bit apart. It's not troublesome, but if you notice that you keep on slipping away, try to place the hands a bit further apart. Okay, we'll do it again. First into a cat position, Bidalasana. Move the head down, the forehead resting between the hands, roll to the top of the head. Extend the arms back. Move the arms a bit in, now make the scooping motion a bit further so you find a good position for the hands already pressing mildly into the abdomen. Now extend the legs. Look up. And again, find your balance. You can stay in this position for as long as you like. In the initial stages of this position, a lot of attention goes to the pressure on the abdomen. But also when you feel more and more comfortable with the pose, try to extend your awareness, not only to the abdomen, but also the position of the hands, the feet, the legs, the awareness of the elongation of the spine. This will surely help you to deepen this pose for you. One more variation. If you're comfortable with this position, Padmasana, you can also do Mayurasana in 
a Padmasana position. It's called Padma Mayurasana or Lotus Peacock Pose. The build-up is exactly the same, only now the legs remain in the full lotus position. For most people this is already an advanced position to sit in this asana for a couple of minutes. Okay, back to cat position. Again, move the forehead between the hands. Roll to the top of the head. Extend the arms all the way to the back. Make the scooping motion, elbows touching. Now look up and lift up. Keep on breathing. Lower the legs. Stretch out the arms. And all the way back to Pat.
and slowly firming the pelvic floor, find your balance. One, two, three, press up from the shoulders, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Easy, come down the same way, knees into the chest, press, 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 and easy down. Good, so if you got that, next tool, number two, is back bend. So let's go ahead and lie down. Here we go, Ordva Dhanurasana, nice and easy. We're just gonna open the spine enough so that Vrishakasana would be possible. Don't have, doesn't have to be your deepest back bend in the world. Bending the knees, pivot forward through the hips, hands back, elbows squeeze together. Inhale, Ordva Dhanurasana. Roll the shoulders into external rotation. Let the spine be nice and open. And then walk your hands in to a comfortable place. And again, we're gonna hold this for 10. One, two, lift equally from the rib cage and through the lower back. Four, five, keep your feet stable. Six, walk in a little more. Seven, eight, breathe freely. Nine, and really try to pull the chest forward. Give it one more walk. And then if you can, if you think it's possible, come up onto your fingertips, press through your thighs, and inhale, come to standing. That's a good test to see, again, if your back bend is controlled. If you take the back bend too much in your lower back, when you try for Vishakasana, it's gonna be all crunchy and not so controlled. So let's see if we can put those two elements together with a happy state of relaxation, and we'll just see how it goes. All right, so let's use that two leg jump up into the handstand. All right, hands forward. We prepare. After your back is warm, the only danger is that, you know, the back is a little more bendy, so you have to control it. Just from your pelvic floor, use the back muscles and find your balance. So we'll see if we can just put those two elements easy together. Shoulders forward, inhale, jump. Find the balance. Get all the way up and handstand first. Nice and stable, hold it for a few breaths. Get stable, push up from the shoulders. And then exhale as you start to hollow your back. Reach forward with the legs, press through the shoulders. Press, press. Keep the legs straight. And then once you've reached what you think is your maximum, gently bend your knees, reach the head up, and hold. Then straighten out your legs, tuck the tailbone, press, press, press and exhale easy down. So that's a real safe way to try. It might not be your deepest version of the posture, but that's an easy way to try because you just combine the back bend with, um, you know, the handstand. So one really important tip if you're working on that is to not squeeze your legs like this. If you think about it, you know, if your leg is up,